Next, we'll talk about severe combined immunodeficiency. And so this is kind of a severe case, a SCID. Uh, that's, you know, the acronym of it. It's the defects in both humoral and cell-mediated immune responses. And if you don't remember what humoral immunity is, I got this picture from Basic uh, Pathology, Robbins, 8th edition. So this is humoral immunity where these B cells turn into plasma cells and they start secreting all these antibodies. These antibodies neutralize the microbes. They're phagocytized by these phagocy phagocytes and macrophages. And then the, the, the destruction of phagocytized microbes happen. Cellular immunity is more intracellular, uh, for usually for intracellular microbes. These viruses, other bacteria get inside the cell. And so these antigen presenting cells, they kind of chew up the invader and they display certain parts of the invader on these major histability complexes. These T cells uh, sense that little microbe here. And then if it's a CD4, it will secrete cytokines and different things. If it's a CD8, it will just kill this cell. And so you can kind of see uh, that pathway going into effect. So that's humoral immunity and cellular immunity. Both of these pathways are knocked out during this severe combined immunodeficiency. So it's effective. Uh, the infants are usually infected. They have severe reoccurrent uh, infections, bacteria, viruses, fungi, protozoan, opportunistic infections, candida, pneumocystis, uh, cytomegalovirus, and pseudomonas and they can cause serious disease but occasionally it can be lethal. So the underlying effects are quite diverse. It's kind of the same thing as the defects can be very diverse in the kind of pathogenesis of all of these different types of severe combined immunodeficiency but the clinically clinically they're sim similar and so here are some of the causes. A single defect affecting both T and B cells or you can have just a T cell defect. You can have a mutation in adazine deaminase, ADA, which is an enzyme involved in purine metabolism. So if you have ADA deficiency, that results in the accumulation of adazine and deoxyadazine triphosphate metabolites. And what happens with that is they inhibit DNA synthesis and are toxic to lymphocytes. So that can be problematic for sure. Um, defects in other purine metabolic pathways. Um, you can have uh, the primary failure of class 2 major histability complex expressions and so you can see if the antigen presenting cells don't have this major histability complex 2 then the T cells are definitely inhibited and can't do their job. You can have mutations in genes according to the recombinase responsible for the rearrangement of lymphocytes, antigen receptor genes. And so as these lymphocytes rearrange these antigen receptor genes to be able to pick up a lot of or be able to recognize a lot of different proteins from microbes, this recombinase is, is knocked out because of this mutation in the gene. The thymus might be hypoplastic, lymph nodes and lymphotissues, mainly the tonsils got an appendix, they can be atrophic, they, they're, not, they're not growing, and they can have a lack of B cell germinal centers as well as the T cell paracortical type of histology. So these patients, they might have lymphopenia, so small or uh, not so many uh, lymphocytes in the blood they can have both T and B cell deficiencies. Other patients, they have increased number of immature T cells or they have large numbers of B cells that don't function because of the lack of the T cell help. Patients with SCID are currently treated with bone marrow transplant, which is pretty cool. And X-linked SCID is the first disease in which gene therapy has been used to successfully replace the mutated gene which is pretty cool. They can go in there and change your DNA if, if you have this skid. You know, that's been, that's been an effective treatment. But, however, one caveat is it is being reevaluated because most patients develop T-cell 
leukemias, which is not good. And they think that's because this gene is located to some oncogene or this uh, gene that gets turned on to create more T cells and so you get a leukemia. But that's, that's a good area of research right here. That's pretty cool. And the last one is the immune deficiency with thrombocytopenia and eczema. So if you have a patient that has low platelet count and eczema, think Viscott Aldrich syndrome. So you can need too few platelets, so you have thrombocytopenia, not as many platelets, and you the patients have the kids have eczema on their knees and on their hands and the other places that are common for eczema. It's an X-linked recessive disease, and you get thrombocytopenia, eczema, and it's you show a marked vulnerability to reincurrent infections. Usually, it ends in early death. The only treatment is bone marrow transplant. See if the B cells can become uh, mature and function, so you don't have immune deficiency. The thymus is initially normal, but there's a progressive age-related depletion of T-cell lymphocytes. So the thymus initially is normal, but then the, the T-cells get depleted in the peripheral blood and lymph nodes, and you have an occurrent loss of cellular immunity. Patients are also prone to develop it, developing malignant lymphomas. So the responsible genes that map the X chromosome and encodes a protein, the protein is called viscoff aldrich syndrome protein. What happens is it links several member membrane receptors to the cytoskeleton. So if these membranes aren't attached to the cytoskeleton, they don't function properly. And the mechanism isn't exactly known, but they think that this a defect in this protein could result in abnormal cellular morphology so the cell isn't exactly shaped like it should uh, the including the platelet shape changes and you can have a defect in the skeleton dependent activation signals in the lymphocytes and other leukocytes with abnormal subtle cell adhesion and leukocyte migration so that might be kind of the pathogenesis, but we are not sure the mechanism is unknown.